uh, see how, uh, how it serves the purpose of uh, striking balance in terms of our adjustment demands and also in terms of looking at it from uh, you know, multiple angles, you no know, complex to uh, simple usage. Uh, as you know, reaction formation basically uh, you know, suggests that there is an opposite behavior pattern compared to what one actually thinks of. Okay. So, you inwardly think something else, but outwardly you uh, know, show a behavior, you manifest a behavior which is exactly opposite to what you internally feel. Now, uh, the basic serv uh, service that uh, this uh, defense mechanism provides you is that it helps you maintain socially approved form of behavior. Why was there a need for um, changing uh, a behavior, manifested behavior compared to what you actually think? Simply because what you actually think grossly mismatches with what the social expectation is. And irrespective of how uh, no, true your evaluation is and how genuine your feeling is and how genuine you feel uh, to do the way you think, society might not accept it. <coughs> Okay. And adjustment does require that your behavior should also enjoy a certain degree of social approval. Okay. And therefore, uh, the main purpose that uh, reaction formation uh, serves is that it helps you come forward finally, with a socially approved format of behavior. The other uh, is that uh, no, may be that your own uh, conscience starts uh, no, devaluating you. Okay that although I understand that this happened, but how can you still think like this. Okay. So, if you are a person no, who always thinks from that uh, no, morality point of view, each and every uh, step if you uh, fit into the moral principles and then you evaluate, uh, there could be a greater chances that you start having uh, no, self devaluating uh, experiences. Now, Reaction formation also helps you avoid self devaluating desires. So, it serves both ways. No? You as an individual enjoy a benefit, because you are not uh, needed to be self critical and hence you do not have self devaluating experience. On the other broader end, okay, uh, you come forward with a prescribed format of behavior, which you know, by and large the society approves of and therefore, inwardly and outwardly both ways you need uh, you finally, derive what you want it. Okay. Uh, the most common type of uh, no reaction formations would be the hate love relationship, where uh, no inwardly you hate somebody, but outwardly you cannot afford to show your hatred. Okay. And hence you show certain degree of affiliation, you show certain degree of love. Uh, take for example, it might look absurd to you. Uh, but in many cases you would find examples like that, where uh, a child or say a student of your age, an individual of your age okay, who hates one of the parents for certain reasons. Now, you might have your own reasons to hate your parent, but at the same time okay, you also know that expression of hatred for one of the parent is extremely undesirable. Okay. Society would curse you your uh, other relatives will curse you for having know this type of a feeling for one of the parents. Okay. And at the same time, there could be a possibility that your own inner self tells you that come on papa did this, but it is okay. Okay. Many people commit uh, errors in life, so what. Okay. So, love hate a very commonly used reaction formation, inwardly you tend, uh, you tend to be very cruel. Okay, but outwardly you convert into to great degree of kindness. Okay. Uh, inwardly there is a desire for sexual promiscuity, outwardly you show uh, no extreme degree of morality based judgment of uh, such expressions. Okay. These are two commonly used type of reaction formations, I will come to one interesting example of it. At a very simple level, a spinster, okay, every day you know, after you lock your door, you put the latch in the night when you go to the bed, 
you have a tendency to you know search your room look inside the you know under the bed okay you open the cupboard to check that nobody is there okay the very fact that the main door was locked the very fact that you were throughout the day you were in the room okay and you know that really nobody has entered the room still you tend to be extremely cautious that is the simple form of uh, know, reaction formation, where actually the actual desire of uh, know, uh, sharing room with somebody gets converted in the form, where you show this type of uh, tendency, wherein you search for the presence slash absence of an individual in your bedroom. Okay. At one end you say that you know I live all alone and therefore, I need to be very cautious which looks very judicious no? when you listen to such comments, but might be uh, that this is actually a form of reaction formation, where you want somebody to be there. Okay. Come to a complex example and in contemporary uh, Indian society, the type of moves that you see, you will find many of them. You have uh, no, uh, you see somebody uh, no, running a crusade against declining moral values. Okay. Actually, what has happened? The person had difficulties in the earlier period of the life, okay. and uh, no, he was supposed to safeguard himself against the recurrence of such experiences. And therefore, later on in your adulthood, okay, you initiate this crusade and you say that fine, there is a decline in the moral value and we should uphold it like anything. I need not mention it, because I will run in controversy then. There are hundreds and hundreds of uh, such scenario in contemporary India, where you would find people fighting for only and only for this cause. No? Claiming that uh, overall, there is a great degree of decline and very fast rapid decline of uh, moral values in the society. And hence, we no, the torch bearers of the moral principles of the society will try to uphold it, okay, and you try all sorts of things, right from starting your own television channel, where you continuously give sermons to you know, recording a session somewhere, and then distributing it to multiple channels, okay, to holding some type of a gathering, where you uh, advocate the moral principles and the morality driven behavior. Okay. <coughs> Two, the fact that uh, no, you have few OV vans and these vans would basically run uh, in the country, in the society talking about it, no, uh, different type of recorded things, which will be continuously be played in the vehicle will keep moving in the city. Okay. I am sure you must have seen all of them, all of them. Uh, study, I was out of the town, I was in some other town and there also I found one vehicle you know, uh, running around the city and a song was being played. So, I could not decipher what this song was. So, I asked the person there who was from the local area that what is this song about, because earlier when the movie used to be released and uh, it used to come to a theater, this was the pattern of announcement. So, uh, she told me that uh, Valentine day is coming close. So, one person in the city who runs an organization, okay, these are his vans no, and it would talk about you no know, that you know, think of the purity of the action, think of the purity of the body and in all song and dramatic form it is recorded and throughout no, till Valentine day it will be played. Two you could appoint yourself as a moral guardian of the society. In the first case, you would running, you were running a crusade. In the second case, you self appoint yourself that I am the moral guardian and therefore, okay, I have the authority invested in me to act okay, as a censor to several of the things that the people in the society have an access to. Now, for example, I say that you know, uh, the sale of pornographic material in the country has increased. For example, I do not know whether it has increased or not, I am just giving an example. Or I say that gradually uh, the 
there is a rapid decline in the morality of uh, the adolescents and you find uh, you know, uh, intense celebration of occasions like Valentine's Day, which is coming very shortly. Earlier what happened to be a day, the, the uh, different different products because for their sale, because they want to have an increase in all those things. They are now advertising that why to celebrate a day, celebrate a week. Okay. So, you spend more in buying things and therefore, the industry would uh, flourish. Now, if I take a stand that I am the moral guardian of the society, nobody has appointed me, I appoint myself, all guard, moral guardians appoint themselves. Okay. And therefore, I say that you know any type of magazine that is sold to the market, I will take the liberty of screening them to decide whether they are suitable for our adolescents or not. Okay. Now, what it actually serves? It could lead to a vicarious gratification. Why? Because you start reviewing uh, you know, print material for pornographic content. Okay. So, what you do in the screening process, you yourself get an exposure to it. Okay. Now, I have been able to gratify my desire to go through the pornographic content without endangering my self concept. So, my moral self will tell me, nahi, nahi, I did not want to see all this, I was evaluating for them. So, I am safe and I am safe not only from your end, my own moral values will not disregard me. No? You remember in the earlier slide we said that you have to avoid the self devaluating desires also. Okay. So, if I show my desire that I want to go through this uh, pornographic content, okay, my uh, super ego might tell you what type of person are you, how immoral you are. So, safeguarding myself against my own immoral desires and at the same time saying I am the great crusader okay, who is uh, you know, trying to safeguard the moral values which is in grave danger in this society. Uh, uh, several years back, every year it happens, but several years back suddenly a um, new brigade was identified, you know, uh, when in Bangalore on a, one of the occasions on the Valentine's Day couple of years back, you know, a group of hooligans they entered a restaurant and uh, boys and girls they were chased, they were beaten, uh, uh, items in that restaurant was broken and later on the chief of they call dash sin i am not using the full name uh, because i don't want to run into controversies no. so now the man comes uh, before the camera and says yes we have done it why and again the same thing you know, the moral values are uh, degrading it is being eroded by you know this type of uh, western influence and we the moral guardians have to safeguard us it has been, uh, no, there are few organizations in this country who would deliberately target these occasions. No? And the whole issue is that this is against the moral values that is very, very native to us and it is all western influence. Okay. Such behavior in the complex format you find that it is actually, it could be reaction formation, where your own internal desire takes a very different turn, which has great degree of social approval and without falling into the trap of devaluating your own self, you yourself satisfy certain things, which otherwise you yourself consider to be immoral. Okay. And hence, if you look at you know, the different types of uh, protests that takes place against different type of social and cultural practices in this country, you would find reaction formation, how generously it is being used. Okay. And nobody says no that this is reaction formation, we are not supposed to say, okay. otherwise the whole mechanism fails. Okay. The next defense mechanism uh, we had discussed was displacement. All we had talked about in displacement was that basically displacement means shifting of the emotion and shift, this is usually shifting of the pent up feelings. So, the example uh, we had taken you know, was that from the boss, uh, the anxiety and hostility was the boss was hostile to you. Okay. 
and uh, this led to certain degree of uh, anger within you, certain degree of anxiety within you and this anger and hostility, uh, anxiety goes from the boss, you shout at your wife, your wife shouts at the children and it progresses. This was the example that we had taken. What could be the other formats of displacement? This is a very obvious type of a displacement. No? One could be that you turn inwardly hostile, even that day we had talked about in implosion, no? that instead of exploding out, you implode within. Now, here in the case of inward uh, hostility, what would happen that the cause of actual anxiety and hostility love is outside. Okay. So, it is the behavior of one individual in the surrounding or it was something in the environment itself that triggered that hostility within you, but then you start accusing your own self. If I had not gone there, this would not have happened. If I would have left the place earlier, then this would not have happened. If I would not have done this or if I would have done this, then this would have happened. Okay. So, you start accusing your own self. Okay. Now, once you start accusing yourself, your, your own self, okay, there is a, no, a severe feeling of self devaluation and guilt involved there. Okay. So, finally, at the end of it, when you start blaming your own self, at the end you say, so bad. Okay. You start having this type of a feeling or you derive guilt out of it. So, inward hostility that way does not serve the purpose, because it finally puts you as an individual into trouble, because finally you what you finally get out of uses of uh, uh, this module would be that you have, you have become uh, know, much more uh, self devaluating tendency you develop, you develop certain uh, degree of guilt both of which are not needed, okay, because it will again demand you to uh, know, take care of these two feelings that are gradually cropping in, so that you can strike the level of adjustment. There could be a very complex type of usage of displacement, uh, which at times could become deviant also, which is destructive criticism okay, or vindictive type of gossip. Now, criticism is uh, no, always considered to be good academically speaking, okay. uh, but criticism in uh, one to one relationship is by and large not accepted. <coughs> no? And therefore, what we choose to do as human beings most of us is that say for example, I and she both are in the in each other's company, okay. we would not criticize each other. So, she would not say anything wrong about me, I would not say anything wrong about her but both of us can find him as a target okay, and criticize him, because he is not there to listen to it and to defend it. Therefore, it is easy for us, okay. but the moment I and him are together, now I do not criticize him, I criticize her, because she is not available to defend herself. Okay. Mostly we run in this format, the person who is absent in the group is criticized the most. But here criticism is uh, you know, taking a destructive uh, turn altogether no? and therefore, the moment it becomes destructive, it is a deviant format of expression of criticism. Okay. So, I criticize you for something, but if I uh, turn into rampage, if I turn into destruction, this is not permissible. Uh, I am sure you must be aware that some uh, recently an art exhibition was going on in Delhi, okay, uh, where uh, the paintings of famous famous artists from India uh, was put for display. And then there was uh, the whole protest by uh, one of the groups saying uh, that few of the Hindu gods and goddesses uh, have been uh, their nude paintings have been put uh, for display and we just reject it. No? Uh, just uh, last weekend, there was a display at Bangalore and again similar type of thing took place. Okay. 
Now you can imagine that uh, you know, I criticize certain format of expression, but irrespective of the fact that uh, you know, how precious this piece of art is, I just say because it does not match my sentiments, okay, therefore it needs to be burned. I might sound little illogical or much more illogical or insane, but let me give you different examples, which I think one should think of. Uh, under certain forms of uh, you know, social transformation, political unrest or uh, the whole attempt of gaining political stability and social transformation, you realize many things happening. And we will take one or two example, one from India, one from nearby, <laughs> nearby would be one of our neighbors and then we will see that does it actually serve some purpose or is there a great degree of destruction involved in it, which actually should not be there. We all know the famous Bamiyan Buddha, the rock carved carving in Afghanistan, which was turned into pieces by the Taliban government. When the Taliban uh, took over uh, power in Afghanistan, uh, have you seen uh, the, that carved sculpture Bamiyan Buddha? There is a place called Bamiyan, where the very tall rock was cut and carved and it appeared as if Buddha is standing on one side of the hill. Okay. Uh, only one piece in, in the world, where the whole now, mountain was carved into a sculpture okay, from one of the sides. Uh, most historic place, place of archaeological importance, but because it did not match with the Talibanese viewpoint. So, they decided to put guns there, field guns there, the tanks there and explode the whole sculpture. And that entire sculpture turned into small, small pieces because of these blasts. I say for example, I am a Talibani, which I am not, hypothetical example. Suppose I am a Talibani and this very uh, fact that uh, no faith and gods cannot be uh, no represented in such form, which the religion does not allow, okay. still I could look at it as a marvelous piece of art. So, I say that fine, you know, the people who thought of it were uh, foolish. Okay. <coughs> Uh, because uh, no, what they believe in and what is never seen, they have carved it. I can criticize them because it doesn't match with my ideology, but I can still appreciate. Think of the artist, no great people. They have carved the whole rock. This could have been an alternate viewpoint. Uh, in Iraq, <coughs> Saddam Hussein's uh, no uh, burst and sculptures, no. Uh, full body sculptures were put at certain places. And uh, when his government uh, was finally turned uh, out, okay, people even uh, had put uh, ropes in the neck of uh, those sculptures and put them down. I am sure you must have seen those visuals. Okay. Uh, <coughs> fine, there was a ruler uh, who certain people probably did not like and uh, this could be one way of showing uh, aggression that fine he executed few and therefore, I execute his sculpture, but think from the other point of view. You know, there was an artistic expression of uh, individual uh, whom you are destroying. Think from a different viewpoint, it is uh, uh, this much amount was invested into creating this sculpture, now it is turned into rubbles. There could be counter viewpoints no? and therefore, once you turn into such type of a destructive criticism, once you start turning into vindictive uh, gossips, <coughs> then you are running a risk, because very generous usage of such things uh, know, could be either complex format of displacement or it itself can make you deviate from the expected norm. Know. And deviations are not the what you call desired form of behavior. Now, we move to emotional insulation. Emotional insulation, you remember we talked uh, about it and we said that basically uh, it is a mechanism that uh, helps you safeguard yourself 
against certain unnecessary type of disappointments. And hence, what you do is that you reduce your ego involvement, your emotional involvement into certain situation and therefore, irrespective of the result that takes place, because you are not involved with it, therefore, uh, you do not derive that this sense of disappointment. Okay. What could be the usual uh, manifestation of uh, such type of emotional insulations? One example I gave you, that was a true example of a person who did not like his workplace okay, and uh, during tea time, he would definitely, definitely read the newspaper because he wanted to avoid the sermons that used to be uh, you know uh, that used to be uh, narrated at that time other examples could be uh, say you are going on your first date and you ensure that you are not too excited and you have reasons for that you may tend to philosophize it and say that i don't know how stable this is i don't know whether this is good or bad i don't know finally i would be chosen or not I do not know whether I would remain loyal or not, okay. but this entire uh, you know, uh, sequence of uh, thoughts are basically made to feel you not so excited about the first and uh, the beautiful experience of life. Okay. There could basically you are trying to avoid certain premature disappointment. An interesting example uh, when uh, Professor Amart Sen got uh, the Nobel Prize in economics, uh, his mother, somebody, somebody from the news channel, uh, called up uh, his mother uh, in West Bengal and uh, asked about her comments and wanted her to endorse this. Okay, and uh, the mother said that uh, fine, I have heard uh, from the news channels. Uh, but let this ceremony take place, only then I will be able to tell you with confidence whether he really got it or not. Okay. So, even though something has been announced, okay, you still do not celebrate it, you contain yourself, let it first be executed, then it is very sure. All you want to do is that you want to doubly ensure that no disappointment takes place in the process. Okay. I know uh, somebody in my family, who is of a similar nature, okay, would uh, know not allow you celebrate okay, things till it actually happens. Once it's hap it happens, then uh, know he will allow you to celebrate like anything, but before that he will ensure that do not celebrate. The reason, once I asked him, very very senior now, maybe closer to 80 years, I asked him that, uh, you know, um, why, why uh, you know you are like this, and since when you are like this, and then I came to know interesting thing, uh, like uh, uh, he became uh, parentless in the early years of his life, perhaps uh, by the age of two or three lost one of his parent, by the age of five lost the second parent also. <coughs> Uh, was uh, brought up by an elder brother, who was just 7, 8 years elder to him and uh, had to struggle a lot. Okay. Now, you could realize know, that somebody, who really had extreme disappointments in life, okay, ensures that celebrations should take place, not only for him, but for all those who belong to him, when actual achievements are attained. This altogether, if you analyze in a broader perspective, once you know his uh, early life experiences, that this is nothing basically a tendency to avoid a recurrence of disappointments in life. This is emotional insulation. Okay. What could be the extreme conditions, okay, where you find that extreme uh, personal experience of an individual and at the same time. Uh, where emotional insulation is being used. Somebody who has been uh, you know, experiencing chronic unemployment, okay, for years and years has been struggling, but uh, is unable to get a job or somebody who has been in prison for long. Okay. So, the very fact that you have been isolated for long 
can make you finally become very resigned in your life. Okay. You, you always tend to be a passive recipient in most of the situation. Your unemployment led to a lower strata, a lower uh, know, uh, status of you in your uh, family, in your society. Uh, it also created great degree of economic difficulty for you confinement in a prison, great degree of uh, disrespect that you uh, experienced, the great degree of social devaluation that your uh, family uh, experienced okay. and then you therefore, you prefer to be uh, know, resigned in your life, do not get uh, involved actively in anything okay. or you become a passive recipient, this could be the extreme usage of emotional insulation okay, that you do not even uh, tend to actively participate in any uh, no, uh, type of uh, involvement where one or more than uh, one individual is needed besides you, because you do not want to have any more disappointments in life. Why? Because you had chronic uh, experiences like unemployment, prolonged unemployment, like uh, imprisonment. So, emotional insulation can take this uh, extreme shape also. Then we come to intellectualization. Now, uh, intellectualization in a broader way, you remember we had talked about that instead of providing justification for one specific uh, know, situation, here you have multiple things which you try to philosophize, you intellectualize and then the gaps between specific events are filled with these logic tight compartments that was intellectualization. Now, this you know uh, somewhere is related to both emotional insulation as well as rationalization, because you have in rationalization you had a specific event where you had to rationalize the behavior. <coughs> emotional insulation because you do not want uh, disappointments. Okay. <coughs> And this is usually employed under milder to extremely stressful condition. So, for simple type of uh, know, uh, stressful situations, we do not use intellectualization. Uh, largely, even for milder things also, you do not use intellectualization, rationalization suffices. Okay. If it is recurrent, then emotional insulation will suffice. Largely, when you move towards the extremity of uh, stressful experiences, there are the chances where intellectualization can be used as a, a defense mechanism. For example, you experience death of your parents and then you explain it in term, terms of the fact that they lived their full life. Uh, one was 87, the other was 83. Okay. Now, you have you do not have any scientific criteria to say that no, those who cross this limit will be considered to be you know uh, those who have lived full life, but then you have your own way of looking at it. <coughs> you have uh, certain failures, you have certain disappointments, but then you say oh thank God, it could have been even worse. You think of a worse situation and you think oh thankfully only this happened, what happened was actually bad but you think of the worst and then you derive happiness or so, thankfully that did not happen or the other form of it could be that you become cynical in your life okay. and you use cynicism very conveniently in your life. Okay. So, these could be uh, the patterns in the case of intellectualization. Now, we come to undoing undoing basically is no uh, a form of an apology for doing something wrong you repent for doing that okay or uh, doing the penance no you punish your own self because whatever you have done uh, you consider that it was not worth doing at all who are the people who would use undoing as a defense one people who have got that type of a childhood training uh, take for example, uh, children who are brought up in families where uh, say for example, it is common thing say the two partners fighting each other. 
So, husband and wife fights each other, after some time they cool down and the person uh, who realizes his or her experience apologizes to the other partner that I am sorry I got angry, uh, but this is what it was. Okay. You say that no, my anger was justified, but you know uh, I still should not have said this, I should not have done this, you apologize. Children who see this type of situation would see beauty in apology. In our country uh, geographically if you see this one way of looking at it could be look at different family, the way you have been nurtured, the way you have been brought up. There are certain uh, geographical locations in our country where you will not find people uh, know who would apologize. Okay. So, small things fight between two groups of children over uh, uh, sharing a cricket field and then parents will come with guns and bullets and there would be few casualties. These are common uses in certain parts of this country, very common. Okay. So, it largely depends on whether you would use undoing as a technique or not would largely depend on how you have been brought up. So, if you realize, if you have experienced the beauty of apology, then you would use it. And let me tell you that even if you have not used it, used a, use it at some time, if you really repent for something, go to the person and face him and say sorry and you would realize how deeply satisfying that sorry is. Okay. Instead of uh, you know, thinking inwardly that okay, I should not have done that, but chalo, yeah, I did it once. Instead of that, apology is the best technique you know, that will you know, help like anything. The manifestations of undoing could be like say, if you are maintaining an unfaithful relationship, you bring more <laughs> gifts. Okay. So, you somewhere compensate for uh, this or you know that the way the method that you have adopted for earning involves certain degree of unethical practices. And then you also ensure that later on you give huge charities. So, you use all type of unfair means to accumulate wealth and part of the wealth you release as charity and then you say oh done. Okay. I should not say this, uh, but uh, just because it has come this way therefore, uh, this is uh, you know, not showing any disrespect to any faith, any religion or any personal practice, uh, but you would realize that compared to uh, small entrepreneurs in this country and middle level entrepreneurs in this country, uh, the places of worships are far more financially well off. Okay, so, if you run a small time business or a middle level enterprise, you still struggle for uh, you know, being economically affluent. Whereas, for people who are involved in certain types of religious places, places of worship, you realize that they receive so much of donation. So, without work or just providing one particular type of religious ritualistic services, they are very well off. You would never realize no few crores, one crore gift coming to a hospital, never. Uh, but uh, one of the temples in South India, at times there is a news, no? somebody donated something which was worth 1.5 crore. The person could have donated to a hospital also. The person could have said that you know uh, many children in uh, the rural part of India who have holes in their heart struggle, because we do not have a good system of uh, uh, surgery in certain localities. And most of these children they have to be uh, brought to Bangalore and government pays attention to them only when it is put in the news okay, or the parents threaten that we will commit suicide or they file a petition in the court that please allow us to commit suicide because we cannot afford the treatment for our children. Several times it has happened in our country, okay. but the person who had <coughs> given this charity could have given to the hospital. No? that this is for say uh, children of these two states, this amount is for the children of remaining two states. No, it goes only to God, why should it go to God? If you ask this question, if you are 
thinking of uh, say income tax rebate or anything, you could have donated to these organizations. No? But why to God and many a times you would realize that there are anonymous donations. This means you are somewhere convinced that the means of accumulation of wealth perhaps had something okay, which you repent for somewhere although you are involved in it and therefore, to get rid of that guilt okay, you go for uh, no penance you punish yourself by cutting a piece of that accumulated wealth and donating it anonymously to a place of worship. Yes, this is undoing. A regression, we had talked about it, uh, know that you uh, basically adopt an earlier phase, you go, go for an older mode of defense, which you consider that uh, no, this was this phase of my life was beautiful and the recent defense that you have adopted, you realize that it is not giving you the desired outcome. And therefore, the whole tendency in the case of regression is to revert back to a state which was basically less demanding. Okay. Common examples, older children, they revert back to bedwetting when they have a new sibling. Okay. So, say a child who is 5 years, 7 years of age, okay, uh, was not at all uh, no, involved into bedwetting, had proper toilet training, suddenly has uh, new baby arrives in the family, both the parents pay more attention to the new baby and suddenly we start bedwetting. The whole intention is that the more and more childish I become, the more and more attention I will enjoy. Okay. A newly married girl okay, suddenly decides to go back to the parents after the first trouble that erupts out in the marital life. You say, nee Baba, it is I had heard how difficult it is uh, to you know, uh, maintain uh, this relationship. Therefore, first sign of uh, trouble in marriage and I say, I am going back to my father. Okay. So, this is uh, no, other forms of expression of regression. Then we come to introjection. Introjection uh, we had discussed, no, that this is basically uh, similar to grafting where you take uh, values from the external agencies and then incorporate it into your own ego structure. This is largely driven by the fact if I cannot beat you, I will join you. Okay, it is driven by this. Now, uh, say the common example could be that you start uh, know, uh, introjecting new sets of values uh, into your behavior after a new dictator has taken over the state or the country. Okay. Uh, you accept the format of a certain thing because the most dominant member of the family okay, wants that to happen, although you do not approve of it, but because the dominant member of the family does so, therefore, you accept it. And the last one is compensation, where a physically unattractive person develops extremely pleasing, extremely pleasing personality. So, I know that I am not uh, good looking, so I need to compensate for it and hence I will develop uh, no uh, certain things, certain qualities in me, which I can definitely do. You remember we had taken uh, earlier when we were trying to understand the concept, we took the example of somebody bad at academics, uh, no trying very hard in the uh, games field. Okay. So, it is like, uh, so I realize that I am not good looking, so fine, I will know now become uh, very good in terms of my behavior. So, that was all about defense mechanism, with this we have completed our present module. Tomorrow when we meet, we will start the next module. Uh, you remember when we were talking here about the me uh, mechanisms, uh, we had not talked about withdrawal and compromise as uh, techniques. No? We said that we will talk after we complete this. So, tomorrow we will start discussing avoidance, withdrawal and compromise as module of adjustment.